Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with our Word Up series, Word Up, Part 2. Now, reading God's Word is a treasure hunt. Many of us don't realize that. Some of you are just trying to get to the basics of what is it saying, let alone what does it mean. And it's in the hidden meanings that you find these secret treasures. So let's dive in. Let's milk the word and get all the meat out of it we can. Let's strip those bones bare. Get everything we can out of this word. And we're going to go through together and dissect. Ready? And God Set. saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now. You know, the first thing you do when you get saved, when you give your heart to the Lord, <laughs> you start to create a separation. You draw a line in the sand. And that line in the sand says, darkness, get back. Light, come forth. Because now you have put away the things of darkness and you are walking in the light which means you have made a difference between light and dark. Now, here's the thing you have to think about. When God calls you, when he pulls on your spirit to draw you in, what he is doing is he's calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Darkness and light will never cohabit. There's always a difference a marked difference between dark and light, always. And it's the same way with your lifestyle. Will you draw a line in the sand and create a line of demarcation so that it is never confused? Darkness will never be confused in your life with light. And will people be able to see the distinction, the difference made in your life now that you're walking in the light. Verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So you got the vapors, and you got the vapors, and you got the the steam, and you've got the atmosphere and all of that. All right. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. There's the atmosphere, the sky, all of that. And the evening and the morning were the second day. You notice the day started with the evening. You notice that, don't you? That's interesting. See, human beings, we create a calendar and we call sunrise the morning. But actually sunset is the beginning of the new day. That's interesting. Sometimes things have to go down before they can come up. In your life, you will notice for you to move into a new day, You've got to go down sometimes in order for God to raise you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will raise you up. Hmm. We have to go down to go up. You want to cross that mountain? You want to get to the mountaintop? You got to make it through the valley to get to the mountain, baby. Some things you have to go through hard times to get to your blessing. But you keep putting one foot in front of the other while you keep God in your face. And you keep your faith strong through prayer and reading God's word. And you will make it to the mountaintop and you will experience God personally. But you have to remember that your morning starts with an evening. Think about it, which means the evening begins, which segues into the night. So you got to go through the night season before you can enjoy 
the sunrise. Wow. Let's take that a little further. Some blessings that you have been praying for, crying for, fasting for, will start in a dark area of your life. Some of your most glorious blessings will begin in the deepest areas of darkness, in the darkest seasons, in the most painful moments of your life. That is the dawning of a new day, even though all you see is dark. All you feel is darkness. All you feel is obstacles and problems and stress and everything coming against you. But that is the birthing pain of your blessings. The birthing pains of the answers to your prayers and your cries will begin in the most painful moments. The most beautiful, glorious thing that happens to a woman even as it happens to the church, is before she brings forth, there are labor pains. Mm. And what ends up happening is that is a dark period. It's a painful period. But that's the beginning of the birthing process. That's the part we hate. Sometimes when it is at the most difficult moments, of our lives and the evening and the morning were the first day. Oh, it is so difficult going through all that darkness, all the hours of labor and, 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 and unbearable pain and sorrow and fear and anguish. And you're waiting for this thing to, to, to get a breakthrough, but you gotta go through that pain before you get to the game, before you can hold your prize in your arms, before you can see and feel and enjoy your blessing. Most blessings come through sorrow. I don't know why. You gotta take that up with the master planner up there. I don't know why. I don't like his methods no more than you do. But unfortunately, even when it comes to the universal church, before Zion brought forth, mm, 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 the labor pains that we must endure as we're waiting for the answer that's already there. But the labor pain is what it takes to make it happen. Your guess is as good as mine. That is the craziest thing about life, life in the Lord. Hmm. Will you keep the faith? Will you remain faithful to him when in the darkest hour, it almost looks like he's not being faithful to you? Will your belief, will your faith, will your fortitude keep you from abandoning right at the moment, right at the moment before the blessing appears. What will you do in those moments? It's always darkest before it becomes the light. Look at the shadow. You notice that it's the darkest right before the line of demarcation. For some reason, when you look at a sharp shadow, the brighter the light, the bigger the blessing, Seemingly the darker the shadow that's lined up right before the breakthrough of the light of day. <laughs> and we wonder, we ever gonna see the light of day or am I doomed for darkness? Am I doomed for pain and sorrow? No, you're not. That is the birthing pain of your blessing. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Mm. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I just thought that would give you a little something to think about for some of you who are really going through right now.
Your blessing is right there. The Bible says in the New Testament, I can't think of the book, but there's 